Erica, how dare you? How could you do such a thing to me? You just poured a whole bucket of ice cold water on me. Don't play dumb with me. I saw you up there on the balcony, smirking like a witch. Oh, that? That was nothing. Just a little prank to get rid of a nasty little fly, that's all. You know, this annoying insect that keeps buzzing around and bothering me. It's my wedding day. My big day. I want everything to be flawless. And I can't have a fly spoiling the mood and the beauty of it all. What? What fly? There was no fly. Oh, there was. It's this vermin that shows up uninvited and unwanted. Just like you, Karen. <laughs> You're a filthy little fly, and I never asked you to be here. What's wrong with you? You're always so mean to me. You never have kind words for me. Don't you realize we're family now? You're my sister-in-law. How can you be so cruel and heartless to me all the time? What did I ever do to you? Huh? Sister-in-law? Who is my sister-in-law? I don't have one of those. My husband doesn't have any sisters. He told me so, so I'm pretty sure I don't have a sister-in-law if my husband doesn't have any sisters. What are you talking about? You're not really related to Lewis, and you know it. So don't act like you're better than me. You're not even related to anyone in this family. You don't have a drop of their blood in your veins. I know your secret. You're adopted. You didn't grow up with them. You came from some orphanage, and neither of us will ever accept you as family. My little brother is my little brother. And you're his wife, right? That makes me your sister-in-law. Whether you like it or not. I don't get why you hate me so much. Hate? <laughs> I don't hate you. I loathe you. You're a product of the system. You were raised by strangers. You don't belong in this family. The moment I found out you were adopted, I was disgusted and horrified. God, I hope no one else knows about it. What if my friends find out? This is a prestigious family. Everyone knows Green Pharmaceutical. How could the eldest daughter of the family of one of the biggest companies in the country be some orphan reject? It's humiliating. That rejection you're talking about brought real love to me. They always treated me as their own. They embraced me from the first day. They always told me that I'm their daughter in their heart. Their real daughter, and they never, ever made me feel less than that. Oh, really? Yes. You want to see my adoption papers? Are you going to dig up the family tree, too? Because according to every legal document you can find, I am Louis' big sister. If you're going to get married to my little brother, the least you can do is show me some decency and respect from now on. I will never do that. How can I, his wife, see you as my sister-in-law? I don't. I can't. I won't. So that's how it is. You're going to despise me just like that? You bet I am. Just like that. And it will never change. You're just some orphan that his parents took in. I guess they felt sorry for you. Or maybe they were just insane. Who knows what they were thinking? This family has been around for ages. Green Farm has been inherited for generations. And yet here you are tainting the family name. I don't want you at my wedding. You're going to ruin the pictures if you're in them. Go away, pesky little fly. Yeah, well, my clothes are drenched anyway. There's no reason for me to stay here. Hey, I told you to stay away. You should have obeyed me when I warned you and you didn't listen. You just came anyway. What did you hope for? It's your own fault you are sitting there soaking wet. You look like a wet dog. <laughs> now get out of here before you wreck anything. You're making the floor dirty. Is that really what you want? You honestly don't want me here? I said leave. I'm very busy. I don't have time to deal with a dumb little fly annoying me. Shoo, I heard a rumor that there was going to be a big announcement after the wedding. It seems like Green Pharmaceutical is about to change hands, if you catch my drift. It's high time your dad stepped down. 
and I know he wants to see the company in good hands, you know, like his sons. You just wait and see. This is a special day for us. It's going to be amazing, and I want everything to be perfect. So beat it. Oh, really? They're giving Louis a raise? You think they're going to hand over the company to Louis and not to me? You're not even their kid. Why would they give the company to you? That makes no sense. Louis is definitely going to be the next CEO of the company. It's clear. He's their real kid. And once he takes over the company, he'll call the shots. He'll be the boss. First things first. I've asked him to do me a little favor. Think of it as a wedding present just for me. He's going to cut you off completely. You really think he would betray his sister so easily? He will. And he can. I know because we already discussed it. He swore to me that I'd never have to see your hideous face again. So, like I said, you better get out of here. Oh, hey, and a piece of advice? Why don't you go ahead and pack your stuff while you're at it? It would be a smart move. Because if you don't, you might end up with nothing but the clothes on your back. You know those wet clothes you are splashing all over the place in? We wouldn't want that, would we? Karen, what happened to you? Are you alright? The wedding is about to start. Where the hell are you? It seems like Louie and Erica have made up their minds. They don't want me here. Erica threw a bucket of freezing water on me. I'm wet from head to toe. I'm going home before I get sick. A bucket of water? What are you saying? Did you know that Louis despises me? Like, really despises me? It looks like both he and Erica just can't stand me. I suppose I should have seen it coming. I think it really gets to them that I'm adopted. I never knew how much it bothered them before. But they made it very clear today. Hold on. You're not kidding? She actually splashed water on you? And even if you are adopted, you're his sister. And a person for that matter. No one should be splashing water on you. This is outrageous. She said that she doesn't see me as his big sister because I came from an orphanage. I'm adopted and not blood related, so I don't really matter to the family. It seems like nothing I say or do will ever change that. I don't know if Louis ever felt like that. Or if Erica has poisoned him against me. But she said they both wish I was gone. What the hell is wrong with those two? I know, it's a bit awkward for me to miss the wedding. And I'm so sorry. But Daddy, I'm sorry. I really, really just want to go home. I don't feel like celebrating after everything that happened today. I don't know what to do without you here. I have prepared an announcement for today. I was going to do it after the ceremony. I was thinking that during the reception, everyone would be giving speeches. You know, I'm getting old. Before long, I'll be retiring. And it's time I get ready to pass the company along the family line. I wanted to have a toast to the new vice president of Green Farm. Oh, so the rumor is true. Louis is taking over. What are you talking about? I already picked you. You're my oldest child, and I want you to take charge. One day, you're going to run our business, and you're more than ready. And when you become vice president, I'll need someone to fill your old position. I had thought I would give that to Louise. At least, that's what I was planning to do. I can't really make a toast in your honor without you there now, can I? Wouldn't it be better if you gave him the job? I'm pretty sure that's what Erica is hoping for. Maybe everyone else too. What the hell are you talking about? Step out of it. You and I both know Louise isn't fit to lead. It's just not in him. And you also know damn well that you are. You know you're the best choice for a million reasons. I guess that's true. Thanks, Dad. He does skip work a lot, and he's always making excuses. I admit, he embarrasses me quite often. He's hard to work with and impossible to manage. The whole team complains about him. And I always have to cover for him. I really hoped that he would grow up a bit and get his act together once he started a family of his own. But I should have known. 
he is who he is. So, of course, he would marry someone just like him. Another spoiled child. After today, I honestly don't know what to do with him. I don't even want to give him your old job now. I don't think he could handle it, for starters. And I don't want to reward someone who is going to act like a baby, even if he is my son. I'm going to speak as his manager instead of his sister. Yeah, I wouldn't give him the job either. I think it would be a huge mistake. I understand. Well, then I've made up my mind. I don't think I'll be making any big announcements today, so you might as well go ahead and leave. Go home, get out of those wet clothes and try to calm down. Erase everything that happened here, okay? You really don't care? Of course not. They can talk all they want, but my daughter is my daughter. I don't want any child of mine to have to endure people that are going to scorn her, no matter who they are. It would be terrible if a stranger did this, but family, I can't believe she threw water on you. It's appalling. Daddy. You just leave everything to me. You don't stress about anything those two morons say or do, okay? Don't let them bother you. Thank you. I feel so much better after talking to you. You always know how to lift me up. On that note, I'm gonna head home. I love you, Daddy. I hope you have a blast at the wedding. Have a glass of champagne for me. You better spill the beans right now. No one said you were even in the running to take over the company. How can they choose you over Lewis when you're not even part of the family? It's a freaking outrage. You're adopted. You're not even their kid, and he is. It's absurd to pick some orphan they dragged home over their own flesh and blood. What are you talking about? I thought he wasn't going to announce anything. Did something happen at the wedding? I didn't think he was going to make any toast, but I guess Dad decided to go ahead and tell everyone after all. He dragged us aside during the reception and told us... Thank God it wasn't a toast. How humiliating that would have been in front of everyone. I would have died. He also told us to stay away. He said he doesn't want us to see the family any more than necessary. No holidays. No vacations. No family dinners. If it's not business, he doesn't want to see us at all. Why are we the ones getting kicked out? Why do your parents not want us around anymore? What happened? Explain it to me like I'm a child, because I don't get it at all. What? He really said all that? And another thing. I never knew that you were Lewis's manager. He always whined about how annoying his manager was, always breathing down his neck. But I never knew he was talking about you. It seems to me that you don't know anything about anything. You always talk, but you never really listen, do you? Maybe you should try it sometime. I'm so confused, okay? I don't have a clue. I just knew that Lewis was going to inherit the company. I never questioned it. It just made sense. He's their son, for God's sake. Everyone was giving speeches and toasts. Everything was going so well. I just knew your dad was going to clink his little champagne glass and hand the company over. It would have been perfect. Instead of a big toast and everyone cheering, we got pulled into a corner and told Lewis is going to be transferred to another branch. Why do we have to go and live in the middle of nowhere? In Montana! Montana? You guys are going to the Montana branch? Like, the factory? Yes, that's what he told us. We just got married and now we have to move to freaking Montana? I can't believe this is happening to me. I don't want to go live in some rural backwater town in the middle of nowhere. I hate it already. I mean, Montana is honestly pretty nice. Have you ever been? It's gorgeous. There are lots of great sites to visit. The nature is amazing. And you can find some really unique foods too. Have you ever tried elk or bison? 
It's pretty delicious. Also, you could take up skiing or something. Winter sports are huge there. If you like it so much, why don't you go? You're the adopted one. You're the one who should be going. I can't do that. I have way too much to do these days. As vice president, I'm going to really have my hands full, and I have a lot of work to finish up before I move into my new position. I have to select a new manager to replace me, too. This is so messed up. Why are they sending him off to the middle of nowhere while you get everything? It's not fair. I know what happened. You're his manager. You abused your power, didn't you? What are you talking about? You probably made up some lies about him to make yourself look better. I bet you gave him impossible tasks he couldn't possibly finish. Told everyone he was calling out, skipping work, shirking his responsibilities. You should be ashamed. You did this to him. I bet you made up all kinds of stuff to tell your parents. You stole his job right out from under him. You stole our future. You're a liar and a thief. There's no way they'd send the real son off to some lame place like Montana if you hadn't fed them a bunch of crap. Why would I do that? I don't need to fabricate anything about him. He really is a horrible employee. But even so, he's my brother. I wouldn't stab him in the back like that. Oh, really? Well, then talk to your dad. Do something. Do anything. You've got to make him see the reason. I don't care what it takes. Just don't let him send us to Montana. Look, if you can help me out, I can tolerate you. You know, as a sister. Oh, you would do that? For me? I'm telling you that if you fix this for us, I can stand having you as a sister-in-law. Consider it a deal, okay? Just do something. I'm begging you for one favor. I've never asked you for anything before. I won't ask you for anything again. But if you don't, I will never talk to you ever again. Oh, wow. Thank you. This is the best day of my life. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? You said you'd never talk to me again. Man, I would love that. What a blessing. That's the best gift you could ever give me. I accept. Thank you so much. Wait, what? What are you so happy about? Didn't you hear me? I'm saying that's it. You'll never see me again. I won't tell anyone we're in-laws. You'll be a ghost to me. Is that what you want? Absolutely. You can just go on and forget about me. For the rest of your life. That would just be perfect. It doesn't bother me one bit. If you don't want to think of me as your sister-in-law, go ahead. What are you saying? Come to think of it, I'm glad you don't see me as your in-law. I don't want you to. I'd rather no one know I'm related to someone like you anyway. In fact, I have a brilliant idea. Let's go ahead and make it a clean break. It'll be better for everyone. Why don't I just go ahead and fire Louis? You guys can live in Montana forever. Wouldn't that be nice? What? You wouldn't dare. Look, Dad has already talked to me about the whole plan. I'm going to be the president of the company one day. That's a fact. Starting next month, I'm going to be the vice president. And that comes with certain perks. I'll be able to fire or hire anyone I want. What? You're getting the promotion now? Like, right now? Yes. Like I said, I start next month. I'll be the vice president of the company. You know, the one that makes HR decisions, gets to decide who stays and who goes. If I have an employee that I don't like or need, I can have them fired before breakfast. Just like that. So why don't I fire Louie? He can look for a job out of Montana. I'm sure he'll do just fine. You guys will never have to worry about seeing me again. Why would you do that? Why? 
<laughs> Look, obviously I'm not going to fire him. I'm not that heartless, but he knows that he's still family. But I'm also not going to lie and say that my little brother is some kind of star employee either. He's not exactly the brightest bulb in the box. Don't mess with me. I can't take it. I'm not going to throw away my life stuck out in the middle of nowhere. I hate the country. It's literally the worst thing I could imagine. Well, that's really how you feel. And you really want me to give him his old job back. You're going to have to give him a lot of motivation. You know, get him to show up to work on time. Maybe put in some extra effort now and then. Show me he cares. If he shapes up and becomes a good employee, I might actually see fit to bring him back. But I need to see some real change first. Oh, shut up. That is unbelievable. I don't understand what the hell happened here. You're the one that ought to be begging me for help, not the other way around. It doesn't make any sense. What makes no sense? Are you doubting my father's decision? No. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... I don't know what I'm saying. You know what? I'm not going to grovel to you. So how do you like that? How's that for some real change in effort? You may think you're someone now that you have a bit of power, but you're still just a street rat. You're just a poor, low-class trash that got lucky when your dad found you. You don't deserve any of this. And I'm not about to bend over backward for some trash like you. Oh, really? Now? So even now, that's how you feel? You still think you're better than me? Just because you got promoted, you think you can talk down to me? Get off your high horse. Just you wait and see. Lewis and I are going to have the last laugh. You'll get what's coming to you. There's no way some low-class stray like you could ever become the president of the company or the head of this family. Is that so? Whatever will become of me, then, as head of the company? That puts me in a bit of a pickle. Huh? You were just saying. How did you put it? Some low-class tray. Couldn't be head of the company. I believe that's how you phrased it. So I suppose I ought to quit then. Wait, what? What's going on? What do you mean to be the head of the company? Who is this? It's been a while, hasn't it? I don't think I've seen you since the wedding. How have you been? It's me, David Green. I believe you know me as your new father-in-law. What? There's no way this is a prank, right? I have to say, Erica, I had no idea you hated orphans so much. I should have been more mindful of your feelings. If only I had known, I want to be sure I don't make you uncomfortable again. We can cut ties and consider the bridge burned. I just want to make you happy after all. I know you won't be comfortable having someone like me in your family after all. Wait, please? What's happening? I'm so lost. I thought I was messaging Karen. Did I accidentally text you instead? Did I mix up the numbers? No, you're definitely messaging Karen. But I'm sitting right next to her. I can see every message you send. I couldn't take it any longer, so I borrowed her phone. Oh no. I guess you didn't know that I also grew up in an orphanage. I never meant to offend you, but I must have spoken above my station now and then. Being so low class, I must have forgotten my place. If you forgive me for being so impudent, I'd be grateful. How is this possible? I don't understand. Well, it's the truth. I never really felt the need to make a big deal out of it. But I mean, really, how is that possible? You inherited the company from your father. Everyone knows the Green family name, and everyone knows the company has been handed down for generations. How could you have inherited the company if you were from an orphanage? 
I thought you were born a green. Oh, I was. To be honest, my father abandoned me. I actually grew up in an orphanage. That's where he found me. At least that's where he eventually came back for me. You're kidding. My parents got a divorce soon after my mother gave birth to me. My mom tried to take care of me. But life is hard on single mothers. It can be brutal. She did what she could, but it wasn't enough. In the end, she gave up. I reached out to my father, but he wasn't interested. He never came to get me. He had moved on and didn't want any reminders of his past. But his new wife was barren. I guess you could say that was fortunate for me. I was already in high school by the time he finally came to get me. Wow, so you really grew up there? Yes, I did. I actually grew up in the same orphanage that Karen did. You could say I'm a proud member of the orphan club. I can't believe it. I'm speechless. I still support that same orphanage. I'm a frequent volunteer there as well. It's important to me to give back. That place changed my life and it means everything to me. And that's how I got really lucky. One day, I met the most adorable little girl when I was visiting. She was shy but kind and so smart. I felt a bond with her right away. And that little girl is my Karen, my daughter. I had no clue. She is my world. She is a vital part of this family. It doesn't matter where she came from or where she grew up. What matters is how we feel for each other, how much we value each other, how much we love each other. That's all that ever mattered to me. It's why I wake up in the morning. It's why I work hard to take care of my family, to give them the kind of life they deserve. But according to you, none of that matters at all. I'm just low-class trash that was raised in a home. No. No, I never said that. I was talking about Karen, not you. I would never, ever say that about you. I would take it all back if I could. I wish I could just erase WhatsApp and all these texts. Don't worry, Erika. You don't have to worry about it ever again. In fact, why don't we go ahead and make it where you never have to even look at us ever again? What? I've got some work to do, but I'll handle it. I'll handle everything. As you wish. So it shall be. Karen, I need your help, please. We are going to be cut off. We are going to end up with nothing. What? Your parents summoned Louis to their house for some kind of meeting. Your dad is going to disinherit him. He's firing him. He won't even let him just transfer to another branch. He won't hear the reason. He said he wants nothing to do with us anymore. Hmm, Dad is being really ruthless, isn't he? Looks like you guys really pissed him off. I don't know why he is so angry. This is all getting out of hand. How was I supposed to know he grew up in a home? Louis didn't even know. If he didn't know, how was I supposed to know? Hey, I'm not the one you should be talking to. You should talk to my dad. There's nothing I can do about it. I've tried to talk to him. It doesn't matter. He won't hear the reason. No matter what I say, he won't budge. He won't even pick up the phone. Look, I told you there's nothing I can do to help you. Please, I'm begging you. You've got to talk to your dad for me. You can make him see sense. He will listen to you. It's bad enough to fire Lewis, but he said he's writing him out of his will. He's destroying our lives. Can't you do anything? No, trust me. There's no use. Once my dad makes up his mind about something, there's no change in it. He wouldn't listen to me or anyone else for that matter. Oh my god. Why don't you look on the bright side? At least you don't have to go to Montana anymore. You guys can stay here, in New York. Honestly, 
There are plenty of other decent companies to work for here. Louis can take his pick, really. If he puts in some hard work, he could work his way up from the bottom. You know damn well that's not what I want. I have big dreams. I was going to be the wife of the president of one of the biggest companies in America. I was going to be someone. I was going to be one of the elites. I wanted to be a member of high society. I wanted to live a big life, hang out with all the celebrities, and be in the most influential social circles. I wasn't looking to marry some average Joe with any old job. I wanted to be at the top. Well, in that case, why don't you two just start your own company? There's an idea. Maybe my little brother inherited some of our dad's work ethic. I'm sure he has it in him to do great things. Maybe he'll be our rival one day. Start our own company? Are you kidding? That's so easy for you to say. It takes a ton of startup cash and connections to start a business anywhere, much less in New York. Do you have any idea what it would cost to even rent a space, much less hire people? Where are we going to get that kind of money? Oh, I'm sure with such a kind and supportive wife, he can do anything. You know what they say, behind every great man is an even greater woman. Anyway, I'm pretty busy, so if you'll excuse me, I have to go. Say hi to my brother for me. I heard that one of Louis's friends took pity on him and gave him a job. He barely lasted a few months before he got fired. Apparently, he was the most incompetent employee that ever had. After that, word spread like wildfire. Nobody wanted to touch him. He was basically unhirable. He alienated his friends too. No one will talk to him anymore. I guess when you act like you're above everyone else, you can't be shocked that your friends desert you the moment you hit rock bottom. Then the most insane thing happened. You won't believe it. We hired some new temps to do some work around the office. When training started, there was a crowd of new faces. And guess who showed up? Erica and Louie. They were using fake names. I guess they were hoping no one would recognize them. They actually asked our HR department not to use their real names. How stupid is that? Needless to say, they were turned away and back to being jobless by the end of the day. It must have been utterly humiliating for them, since I haven't heard from them since.